Thank you for making time to listen to this message. I'm so excited to be sharing about great performance. This is a series that we are dealing with the church. And today we are talking about part two of great performance. Before I get into it, let me just uh, do a short prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share your word on this platform. I pray that you open our ears and you open our eyes and we, we grow in wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I greet you all. My name is David. I'm a pastor at IM Church. And um, it is an honor and a privilege to share this message. It's a very close message to my heart. It's about performance. And um, if you have not listened to part one, I'm encouraging you to go and listen to part one. Great performance part one as we are doing part two. Now, we say, what is performance? Performance is how well you do something. Performance is an action of presenting a task. A performance is a display of a promise. Most people are judged by performance. Everyone, they judge you based on your performance. People can give you a benefit of a doubt if they see you for the first time. But as soon as you perform, if you have a poor performance, then people, well, they'll know, okay, this one is not, you know, has a poor performance. Most people in life, they fail because of performance. Okay? Some people, they lose their jobs. Some, they close their business. Some, they even lose relationships. But if you check close, it is always a poor performance. If it's at work, a person probably is coming late or they are not performing at work. If it's in business, people are not sharp in terms of service delivery. Then they lose their customers. If it's in a relationship, maybe you always blame your partner. You're always pointing fingers and you never look at your performance. Out of 10, what is, how is your performance in your relationship? It's very important to know that you are judged based on performance. Successful people, they have a great performance. So which means they keep going higher and higher because they keep the momentum of success. A great performance comes from what I call a winning attitude. In the last message, I shared about my story, how I was in a relay uh, sports back in primary school and how I dropped the baton while we were running in a relay and how my attitude changed. I had what I call a defeated attitude, which means I was beating myself up for making that mistake. And I actually stopped playing sports because of that mistake that I made. Most people, they are struggling with what I call a defeated attitude. If you want to have a great performance, you need to change that. You need to have what I call a winning attitude. Switch from a, you know, a defeated mindset. Switch from that uh, defeated attitude, which it will always produce a poor performance. You will have a poor performance if maybe you are in a relationship and you had a bad breakup. You'd always uh, be fearful or maybe don't you, you not trust your partner because of what happened in the past. So you need to learn how to turn that quickly and have a positive and have a winning attitude. Very important. Now there are 10 keys. I call this ones a secret to great performance. How to build up a winning attitude. So it's 10 of them. You have to write it down quickly. Number one, vision. You need to have a vision which is a, a future image of where you're going. Number two, goals. You need to have goals. You need to have plans and activities. Number three, passion. Okay? Which means you need to be clear about your motivation and what is driving you. Number four, beliefs. You need to have right values, doctrines, and principles. You need to have right doctrine and principles. Number five, talent. You need to discover your, your talent, discover your gift, know your ability. Number six, strength. You need to focus on your strength, not only your weakness. Focus on your capacity and your depth. Number seven, you need to have a mentor in your life. Somebody who speaks to you, somebody who's coaching you, somebody who's a role model. It's very important to pick because there are many voices. But if you have a voice of an individual, it may be in different areas. In a relationship, you have this mentor. In business, you have that mentor. Like at church, I am a spiritual mentor because I am leading uh, the local church. So when they want to grow spiritually, they may have to listen to me as their coach or as their mentor or as their father in the faith. Number eight, rest. For you to have a winning attitude, you need to know how to rest. I call this reset, restart, and recharge. Very important. Number nine, teamwork. You need to have what I call true friends 
comrades, people who stick with you through difficult times and good times. And last one, for you to have a great performance, you need to know your main target. What is an end goal? What is an end game? We shared about this thing on the previous uh, message and then we're going to continue to break down each and each of these points to clarify so today i want us to talk about vision i want us to jump in and talk about vision so our key scripture is habakkuk 2 verse 2 and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it now let me break down this verse quickly the lord is saying here you must write down your vision. So which means you must speak about your vision. You must act your vision. You must practice your vision all the time. Be what you say you are. So which means practice that. Be that person. If I'm a musician, I happen to sing all the time. If I'm a speaker, then I speak all the time. Be who you say you want to be. And then another part it says, make it plain upon tablets. The word make it plain here, which means it must evolve. Your vision is clear based on, you see, the way you articulate your vision is how people are going to understand it. So as you grow and you mature in your language, amend your vision, make it clear, make it sounds plain. Make For people, when they read your vision, it must be easy. All right. The Bible says those who read it will run with it. So a vision, it's not only your baby, but you need people to help you achieve that. No one can be successful by themselves. You need a team. You need someone to work with you. So what is the vision? It's a big question. What is a vision? So I'm going to give you five words that I want you to remember every time you see a word vision. Write these words down. Number one, a vision is an image vision is an image of your future very important number two when you think about vision think about achievement achievement so achievement of your main goal what is your main goal in life where do you see yourself in 20 years where do you see yourself in 40 years the achievement of that goal is called a vision number three blueprint blueprint so blueprint of your ultimate success when you're going to build a house you now you first get a blueprint when you see there's going to be a building or a mall coming next to you they will have this picture that they put of uh, uh, the future that how the mall will look like how the building will look like that is called a vision that blueprint or that picture shows you what is to come you need to walk in life with that picture when you enter into a relationship, display your blueprint. Display your 20 years. Let your partner see that I am a five-bedroom house. I am a, I am a mall. I am this. I am that. So that when a person uh, engages with you, they understand who you are in the future. You know when you talk about blueprint, it's like when you're building a house. You need people to come, bring mud, to bring cement, to bring sand, to bring water, to bring uh, 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 bricks. All these service providers, they need to be clear about what you're doing. Because if you are building a two-bedroom house, you will get fewer things, I assume, rather than, than if you were building uh, a 10-bedroom house or if you're building a mall. So if you want a support and if you want your partner to give you a full support, you need to be very clear about who you are in the future. What is your ultimate success? What is your main goal? What is the future? Number four, another word that you must have when you think about a vision is guidance. Guidance. So a vision will always guide your image and your lifestyle. And I want to add this, it will guide your friends, the people that you hang around with. Your vision will guide you from the image that you have to a lifestyle that you have. All right. Very important. The way you look, you attract certain people. So if you're going to own a certain business or you're a CEO of a business, you might want to now and then have that image that attracts other CEOs. There's a, that's why people, when they're going for an interview, they will wear or they will dress up um, formal because they are going into a corporate space. You can't go there with, with the beach clothes, sandals, and shorts, 
and know and just a t-shirt and say i'm coming for an interview and i want to get a, a job so if you want a job then you start wearing uh, a, a formal or you wear professional why because you are coming for an interview very important so your image and your lifestyle and the people you hang around uh, with all the things that you do it shows who you are in 10 years it shows who you are in the future so vision will guide you there are places that i don't go why because i have a clear vision i normally share my story of how i used to drink a lot how i used to live my life carelessly and then in 1999 i made a decision that i will never drink alcohol because i want to be a father who is responsible i want to be a husband one day who is responsible so i made a decision based on the picture i wanted to portray for my future then i said i will not be going to clubs and drinking i'll find other ways to have fun my lifestyle has to accommodate the future me the 20 years me so my vision began to guide me from the early 2000s that's why i made this great decision so the question is is your vision helping you to improve things you need to see your lifestyle what you are eating your vision must tell you you cannot eat fast food all the time you cannot eat carelessly. You must watch your health. If you are planning to be rich and successful, you need to then live a life, live a healthy life. Control how you eat. Control how you sleep. Control what you do with your time. Close sometimes some of the gadget and open a book or something. Learn something. Why? Because your future demands it. So your vision will always guide you. If you're going to be a medical doctor, you're going to have to learn to study many books. If you're going to be a, 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 an attorney or you're going, to, you're, you're going to own your own business, you're going to have to upgrade yourself more and more all the time. Very important. Last, last part of the vision. What is a vision? A vision gives you direction, desire, and a structure. So every time when you hear the word vision, think about structure. A vision will always show you where you are going. So it gives you direction. And then also a vision controls your desires. You cannot desire everything you see because, oh, there's that. I desire it. Currently, I might be driving a certain car. Why? Because I am going towards a certain goal. So all my investment are in my business. Very important for you to understand. So you cannot have all the good things now and say, I want to enjoy my life now. Uh, and then, I, you know, uh, tomorrow will worry about itself. It's very important to know how to save, how to spend wisely, to know how to invest wisely, and to know how to live a life that you can afford. Don't live above your means. So your vision will guide you. You know, if you're a person who doesn't like maybe taking pictures, you don't like videos, then maybe you don't need a phone that is got high pixel, which means that takes wonderful pictures. But the fact that, you know, there are phones that can cost up to 30,000 rand. And then maybe it's got good features of like photos. But if you don't like photos, then you don't need that phone. Okay? Find a phone that suits your vision. Find a phone that suits where you're going. It's not about, I can afford it, let me take it. Because you don't say, oh, I can eat fat cooks, I'm a queen, and just eat it. No, you have to watch. You have to watch your health, watch your weight, watch what you're eating because it's not just about uh, being slim or, 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 or gaining weight. It's about health also. In, in, in few years, if you are eating carelessly, how is it going to be? So it's very important. So five words, remember, image, achievement, blueprint, guidance, structure. That's what the vision does. Now, there are three important vision in life that you need to have a great performance in them. So remember, three important vision. For you to perform well, you need to know where you're going. If I'm driving from Johannesburg, I'm going to Devon, then I, I know it's a, it's a five to six hour drive, then I'm going to have to rest. I'm going to have to prepare myself for the journey. But if I'm driving from Johannesburg to Pretoria, it's less than an hour. So I there's not much preparation. I just drive. It's around the corner. If your vision shows you that I am this person, I'm going to Durban. So I'm going to have to have a capacity. I'm going to have to have uh, 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 enough petrol. I'm going to have to have money for toll gates. I'm going to have to be have rested enough to drive for six hours because the journey is long. 
So you need a vision and you need to, for you to perform well, you don't want to be taken by surprise. I like the scripture that says, a wise man first calculate the cost before he start building the house. Don't just open a business without knowing what is the business going to be, who's going to be your clients, uh, uh, what are you trying to do with that business. And you can't have this business today, next month you have another business, the other month you, you keep changing. You're going to have to find something and focus on it and build your life in it. So three important areas where you need to perform very well. Number one, God's vision, family vision, personal vision. I'm going to say it again. There are three important vision in life. There's God's vision, there's a family vision, and there's what I call a personal vision. So if you're writing down, write this. God's vision is church. God's vision is is church okay so what is church is the place where we receive salvation we share salvation and we practice salvation we receive the gospel we share the gospel we practice the gospel that's what church is all right number two what is family so if you're writing down right family right home h-o-m-e home every time when you talk about family vision you are talking about home so home is your partner it's your children and retirement. Your partner, children, retirement. Always know when you're talking about family vision, it focuses on those things. Number three, which is what we're going to focus on um, on this message today before we close. Personal vision. Personal vision. So a personal vision, if you're writing down right, work. Work. A personal vision is work. Okay, it has to do with income spending and investment your work has to do with income spending and investment you need to have a great personal vision so that you you learn how to perform well you need to have a very clear personal vision so that you can give a great performance okay so a personal vision is defined so a personal vision defines who you are in the future i've already said that it's why it's, it's important for you to write it down and you need to remind yourself. You need to read it. All right. When you're about to make a decision, ask yourself, is this taking me closer to my 20 years? Or is this derailing me or putting me off course? Very important. A personal vision is connected to your purpose in life. You need to convert that into a career. Every person is born for a purpose, which means there's a reason why you're on earth today. If you just do anything that you find your hand to do, then it might not be your purpose. Then it might frustrate you. Maybe you are studying something you don't like. Maybe you are in a, in, 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 in a job that you don't enjoy. I, you are off course. You are, you are far away from your purpose. You need to look deep inside of you and discover why am I here on earth? Why am I still alive? And begin to focus on that. Now, the difficult part is to convert your purpose or your great desire or your vision into a career. So a career is what I mean, convert it into your occupation, into your profession. When I was young, I wanted to be a singer. I shared a story how I stood in a pile of bricks next to our house with a spoon in my hand, singing on, on top of the bricks and then looking at the wind moving uh, uh, in the grass and I, would, and I would see people. I said, one day I would be a singer. I will sing in front of many people in, in the stadiums. I'll fill up the stadiums and I'll sing. So that was a desire when I was young. The difficult part was to convert that desire into a career which means I had to be a singer. In 2000, I began to sing. 2005, I started my solo career. In 2010, I began to record, which means I became a recording artist. In 2014, I began to write books. You know, So it is very important for you to convert your purpose into a career. Never confuse God's vision with your personal vision. So God's vision is church and your personal vision is work. All right, very important. Personal vision is connected to your career, your business, your job, or work. You must always remember that. Personal vision provides for your family and your loved ones. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. I love this verse. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. It puts it very clear. If anyone is not willing to work, then 
he is not to eat either. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat. If you're not going to work, you're not going to eat. If you're not going to work, you're not going to be able to provide. If you're not going to work, you're not going to be able to have money. You will not have money. Don't blame the devil. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame your family. The question is, are you working? And in this message, I'm trying to get you to perform very well at your work. I'm trying to move from a poor performance into a great performance. But you need to have a very clear picture about your vision. Vision determines your work in life. Okay? So when you have a vision, when you have a clear vision, personal vision, then your work is going to be clear. In Genesis 2 verse 15, we hear God is talking to Adam. He says, okay, I'm putting you in a garden. You must work the garden. You must take care of the garden. Your job is to, you know, you, you must work, be here. And then in verse 19, God gives him another task to name the animals. Okay, so there's a difference between a job and work. There's a difference between a job and work. Now stay with me. I need to explain this. Dr. Miles Monroe says, a job is what you are trained to do, but work is what you are born to do. I'm going to say that again. A job is what you are trained to do. You are trained to write a CV. But work is what you are born to do. Now, when it comes to singing, make an example. It comes so simple to me because I can breathe in. When I breathe out, is a song coming out. The notes are coming out. I do it with great joy. I can be practicing in the middle of the night. I can be practicing early in the morning. You can wake me up at 4 a.m. and say, go get a flight. You are going to sing somewhere. I will do it with a big smile. Okay, it is what I was born to do. I enjoy it. Somebody else, maybe who's in a medical space, they enjoy medicine. They enjoy, you know, the whole thing, injecting people. They have no problem with blood. Okay, they were born for it. They can they can work overtime. They enjoy that. Somebody who's a teacher, they enjoy to explain to the children, maybe a lecture. They enjoy it. All right, so it's very important for you to know your work. What is my work? Your work is connected to your purpose, okay? A job is, is an employment. It's occupation. It's a position that you have. But a work is a task or an activity to fulfill a purpose in life. I'll say that again. A work is a task or an activity to fulfill a purpose in life. You work, okay, so now you can work even if you're unemployed. Very important. You can work. In, you see, there are, people, there are people who have jobs, but they are not working. They, they have a poor performance at work. You are there, you're just not doing your job, but you, you have a job. But work, you, even if you are unemployed, you can still work. In my, my last employment was 2013. So for nine years, I've been unemployed, but I work very hard. I work hard in the music area. I work hard in, in books. I work hard in my speaking. I'm always finding ways to improve, starting books. I'm always out there making sure that I am giving a great performance. All right. So a clear vision determines your work. You must know that. A clear vision inspires a great performance. People without clear vision, they will always give poor performance because they, they lack conviction. People without a vision, they settle for anything. Today, they can work in, in, in retail. Tomorrow, they work in, uh, 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 say, okay, I'm working in government. I want to work in the private sector. The next day, I'm starting my business. The next day, I, I'm doing this, you know, I'm doing that. Because you have no vision. So you need to figure out why you are on earth. What is it that you are mostly passionate about? What is your purpose in life? Then you convert that into a career. Then you'll see performance, great performance. You'll be inspired to give a good performance. All right? I'm coming to an end now. Vision is key to your great performance. I want to give you just a few questions to ask yourself, you know, and help yourself in to have a great performance. So these are 10 questions to help you improve, improve in your performance. Okay, number one. What is my performance out of 10? 
How is my performance out of 10? I'm talking about in your career, so at work or at school or in your business. Out of 10, I want you to rate yourself. How is my performance in my relationship? If you're in a relationship, if you're in between the relationship, the previous relationship, how was your performance out of 10? And then how is your performance at church? In your ministry, what you're doing for your community, if you're doing in a local church, out of 10, I want you to rate yourself. Okay, number two, I want you to ask these questions because they will help you to improve your performance. Why am I working or studying this course? Or why am I in this relationship? Why am I working? Why am I studying what I'm studying? Why am I in this relationship? You need to ask yourself because maybe your poor performance is because it's not clear why you are doing this thing. Your poor performance at work is because you are misplaced. You are off course. Your poor performance at school failing because you don't like what you're studying. You, you took it because they said it's the only thing that is available based on your marks or whatever. But you just took it and then you are, you are struggling. You might be in a relationship, moving from one relationship to another because you don't even have a, re a right reason to be in a relationship. So question number three, can I study without writing a test or having an exam? Can I study my books? All right. The same time you can ask, can I work over time? Can I work without pay? If they say this month there's no money, would my performance change? Would my attitude change towards my work? I'm helping you to discover if you are in the right position. I'm helping you to improve your performance. Okay, number five, very important now. If I was rich, would I still work? Would I still study what I'm studying? Would I be in this relationship? Would I attend this church? Okay, if I was the richest person, if I had all the money in the world, would I be working this kind of work that I'm doing? Would I be studying what I'm studying? Would I be in the relationship with my partner? Would I be going to this church? Number six, can I recruit people to work in this work? Can I recruit people to come to my church? Number seven, if I had a chance to choose again, would I still choose the same work? Would I still choose my studies? Would I still choose the same partner I have? Would I still go to the same church? If I was given a second chance, would I still choose these things? Number eight, we are almost at the end now. Do I want to improve my performance? I think here you must just say yes or no. Do you even see the reason to have a great performance? Or you think I'm already there? You see, the thing about a great performance, you always want to do better. So you always, you compete with your previous performance. You always want to improve. You don't look at people, you want to improve yourself. You don't compete with anyone, but you compete with your previous performance. You want to do better. Very important. Do I want to improve my performance? Yes or no? Number nine, which areas do I need to improve performance in my life? Which area do I need to improve performance? Is it work? Is it my studies? Is it my relationship? Is it a church? Is, 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 it, is it my health? The way I eat? All right. Which area does it need an urgent improvement? And the last one is I close now. Three words to define your vision or to define your purpose or to define who you are in life. My words are simple. To inform, to inspire, to impact inform inspire impact i want you to write yours what are three simple words that define who you are i want to pray father i thank you for this opportunity to share this message we are born to do great things but poor performance it makes us to fail as somebody is listening to this message you can improve there is a great performance a great performer out of you. It begins with a vision, a very clear vision, God's vision, family vision, and a personal vision. Every person has a personal vision. Father, I thank you for this message and I thank you 
for somebody who's listening. I give you the glory. I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.